A summary of everything that is stated in this video may be found on the CoinMarketCap website. I would also like to remind you to give my channel a like and subscribe to it so that you can stay up to date on future XRP news, as well as other cryptocurrency news, in general. Take a look at this now, shall we? As part of the SEC lawsuit, Ripple Labs has taken action. As we move forward, it is important to note that a fresh cryptocurrency airdrop is now taking place on Telegram and is scheduled to launch in the very near future. I would ask that you make sure that you take part in this airdrop. Within the video's description is where you will find the link. Make sure you don't miss out on this opportunity. In the meantime, let's proceed with our video. Stuart Alderati, the chief legal officer of Ripple Labs, has offered an overview of the events that are going to take place in the near future in the continuing legal fight that the firm is having with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the SEC. Ripple's compliance with legislation concerning token sales in the United States is called into doubt by this case, which centers on the classification of XRP as a security. These questions are of great importance. During the process of appealing a decision, what are the additional procedures that are involved? It is anticipated that the resolution will not take place until the year 2026, taking into consideration the fact that the matter is now being worked via the appeals process. Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission CC are both gathering ideas for their legal strategy, and stakeholders are getting ready for a protracted legal procedure in its appeal. There is a lot of anticipation among the stakeholders. There are a number of specific concerns that Ripple is arguing. The ruling that categorized certain institutional XRP sales as unregistered securities transactions will be the subject of Ripple's cross-appeal, which will be submitted in the coming weeks using the Form C that the firm has prepared. The appeal will be filed in the coming weeks. The fact that rulings taken by district courts are typically supported by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals was cited by Alderati as the reason for his optimistic outlook regarding the appeal. In its appeal, Ripple expressly challenged the conclusion that Judge Analyze Satoris reached on the interpretation and investment contract. This was done in order to challenge the judgment. When it comes to the XRP sales that are under question, the company stands by its position that they should not be categorized as securities. Ripple is making considerable headway in a number of domains, including expanding its reach around the globe and developing a new stablecoin that is being termed Rue Lust. On top of the legal strategies that the corporation employs, they are also included. The purpose of this stablecoin is to satisfy the regulatory requirements of the state of New York while simultaneously enhancing the effectiveness of transaction processing. Ripple's suit against the SEA could have enormous repercussions for the cryptocurrency industry, as it could establish significant legal precedents. This could have a huge impact on the landscape of cryptocurrencies. The possibility that the appeals process will be delayed until 2026 is one of the most significant consequences. In the cross-appeal that it has filed against Zexy's classification of XRP, Ripple is confident in its capacity to overcome the challenge. There is a risk that the outcome will have more significant ramifications for the Bitcoin industry. The company's commitment to successfully navigate the ever-changing regulatory landscape while simultaneously pursuing development and innovation is demonstrated by the fact that these activities involve both legal and operational endeavors. As the continuing disagreement between Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission continues, the chief legal officer of Ripple Labs has offered an update on the next steps that will be done to address the situation. This legal battle is over whether or not Ripple sold this coin without first registering it in accordance with the laws of the United States, as well as whether or not XRP is deemed to be a security. The actions and procedures involved in the appeals process the case, which began in the year 2020, is currently approaching the appeals phase, and it is projected that the process could continue until the year 2026. The case was initially filed during the year 2020. In the course of the ongoing legal preparations, both parties are making themselves ready for the lengthy voyage that lies ahead in the process of litigation. At Ripple has already released additional information regarding the reasons that the SEC has for appealing the ruling during the swell conference that Ripple held, as well as the cross-platform appeal of Ripple. It was brought to his attention that the Securities and Exchange Commission is obliged to submit Form C by the 16th of October, 2024. This form will provide a thorough list of the issues that it plans to pursue in the action. He was informed of this requirement. Ripple's various cross-appeal points will initiate the process of its cross-appeal by filing its Form C within the next two weeks. This will be the beginning of the procedure. Regarding the ruling that categorized certain institutional sales of XRP as an example of unregistered securities transactions, the company intends to submit an appeal against the decision. His hope that the appeal will result in a beneficial outcome for Ripple was highlighted by the fact that the majority of appeals in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals uphold decisions that were issued by district courts. Alderode expressed his optimism that the appeal will result in a favorable outcome. For its cross-appeal, Ripple will focus on specific sections of the order that Judge Annalisa Torres issued. The ruling came to the conclusion that institutional XRP transactions breached securities laws since these sales did not contain investment contracts. Ripple will do this by focusing on these particular provisions. One of the arguments that the corporation makes is that they should not be classified as securities because they do not entail contracts of this kind. 
In addition to continuing to broaden its activities across the globe, Ripple has also launched a new stablecoin that goes by the name Relust. These events are taking place at the same time that the company is engaged in continuous legal disputes. On the, the stringent regulatory structure that New York has in place will be responsible for issuing the regulation of the Relust. The objective is to reduce the cost of international payments while simultaneously enhancing their promptness. An action brought against the Securities and Exchange Commission has the potential to establish new legal precedents and will have substantial ramifications for the Bitcoin market. In the event that other cryptocurrency companies are faced with issues that are analogous to those that they have encountered, the conclusion of the appeals process may serve as a source of direction for others to follow. And Shell and the Securities and Exchange Commission have been engaged in a heated legal struggle for quite some time now, and both parties are now drafting their appeals. The argument has been going on for quite some time. The core of the argument revolves around the question of whether or not XRP should be classified as a security for the purposes of classification. Despite the fact that Ripple maintains that its institutional sales of XRP do not fall under this category, this viewpoint has the potential to establish an important precedent in the world of cryptocurrencies. Clio of Ripple describes the appeals process in this video. Stuart Alderode, the chief legal officer of Ripple, recently made a statement regarding the progression of the case while speaking at the annual Swell conference held by the firm. It is dependent on whether or not XRP is a security and whether or not its sales comply with us legislation that the action which started in 2020 is being taken. In light of the fact that the case has moved into the appeal stage, Ripple and the CC have until October 16, 2024, to present their respective points of disagreement. Considering the opinions of specialists in the business, it is possible that a definitive settlement will not be put into effect until the year 2026. There is a high probability that Ripple will focus its appeal on the judgment that categorized institutional XRP sales are considered to be security. At the beginning of the year 2025, each of the parties will have the opportunity to offer their written defenses to the court. On the other hand, due to the substantial amount of legal back and forth that is anticipated, it is extremely unlikely that a conclusion will be achieved in that year. Within the realm of law, Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission are now engaged in a conflict. Alderati expressed his trust in Ripple's legal posture, adding that the company felt stronger in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals than it did in the lower court. Ripple's confidence in its legal stance was expressed in Court Alderati's statement. During the course of the action, variations of the SEC and Ripple logos are presented in a prominent manner. Despite the fact that it is probable that Ripple's appeal would not dramatically impact the decision that was taken by the court, he stated that the outcome may very well establish an important legal precedent for the cryptocurrency ecosystem as a whole. For the sake of establishing more distinct legal boundaries for potential future conflicts, Ripple will argue that the selling of XRP by institutions does not constitute an investment contract. Ripple is making an effort to develop more precise legal frameworks for the sale of cryptocurrencies, which will undoubtedly have an impact on the larger business. These frameworks are backed by real-world assets, AROA, and are promoted by licensed investment banks that comply with micro-regulations. This high-profile court dispute continues to be closely observed. The upcoming beta platform will give investors the ability to buy and trade these exchange-traded funds, which are denoted by the letter S. It should be noted that the material that has been supplied is not intended to serve as business advice. In the event that any investments are made on the basis of the information that is provided on this page, there is no responsibility for those investments. Prior to making any choice on investments, we strongly recommend performing independent research and talking with a professional who is educated in the field.